So this is 7.3. We're going to talk about three different topics today. Conversion and divergent series. You're like, we didn't talk about that last time? Yeah, we did. We'll talk about it more. Geometric series. Didn't we talk about that last time? Uh-huh. We'll talk about that more. And introduce one new thing called the nth term test. Now, remember the difference between a sequence and a series? We did this in grade 11. But recall that a sequence is just an ordered list. Well, a series is a sum of the numbers in the list. And an infinite series can be represented as the following. Got the summation sign here of all the terms in the sequence, a sub n, starting from 1 to infinity. So written out the long way. First term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, nth term, plus all the way to infinity. All the terms. That's why we call that an infinite series. Now what happens as more and more terms of a series like this particular one are added together? Once again, if you're not too sure what the series represents, just plug in values. Plug in n equals 0. So 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. There we go. Plug in 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. Notice you're just adding all the odd numbers together. And if we keep doing this all the way to infinity, because that's what it says, you can see that the sum also approaches, you get it, infinity. And we know that if something goes to infinity, do we call it diverging or converging? Yeah, this diverges. Yeah, see, divergent. <laughs> what about this one now? What happens as more and more terms of this series get added together? So notice this is the sum as n equals to 1 to infinity. The expression is 3 over 10 to the power of n. So our first term when n is 1 is just 3 tenths. When n is 2, 10 squared is 100. n is 3, that's 1,000, and so on. Notice as a decimal, this is just 0 0.3 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.003. And hopefully you know that this is just 0 0.3333333333 or 0.3 repeating, which is the fraction one third. Notice in this case, the sum actually becomes a finite number. And therefore, this is an example of a convergent series. In particular, a convergent geometric series. Why geometric? Because notice how the common ratio here is just one tenth. So note the common ratio of the previous series is one tenth. Okay? Turn the page. So, just a quick summary of this idea of a geometric series then. If consecutive terms in a series now have a common ratio of r, we call it a geometric series. Notice the notation, the sum of n equals to 0 to infinity of a, r, n. Okay? By the way, we could have also used this form, sum of n equals to 1 to infinity of a, r, n minus 1. Both formulas give you the same written expression here. So either or can be used as the general form of a geometric series. Now note also from Math 11, I think this is Unit 1, Section 1.5, how do we know if something diverges or a geometric series diverges? It all depends on the ratio. And if the absolute value of the ratio is greater than 1, then the series diverges. And if the absolute value of the ratio is less than 1, then the series converges. And yes, I hope you remember the formula. It's T1, or in this case, A, over 1 minus R. Okay? You want the proof? Look at the pre-calc 11, I think, section 1.5 video. I think that's where it is. So, I want you to look at the next examples. They are all geometric series, and it's your job to tell me if these series converge or diverge. And to know that, you have to look at the common ratio and determine if it's bigger than 1 or less than 1. Okay? If it does converge, then I also want you to find the sum using this formula here. Okay. I'll show you number three, and I'm going to ask you to try number four and five on your own. 
<sighs> Not too sure how things start. Just plug in the numbers. N equals 0. So therefore, the first value is just 3. When n equals to 1, this becomes 3 halves. n equals to 2, that's 3 quarters, and so on and so forth. Key thing here is to determine the common ratio. That's, of course, the comparison of two um, consecutive terms. I believe the common ratio here is just a half. And because this is a geometric series, so this is a geo series with the common ratio being less than 1, therefore it must converge. And because I know it must converge, now I can use the formula for the sum to infinity, and that's a over 1 minus r. a in this case is 3. 1 minus a half is a half. 3 divided by half, that means it's 6. So the sum of this series is 6. Okay, all right, you try four and five on your own, go. Dun, 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 dun. Three over two to the power of zero, that's just one. Three over two to the power of one. 3 over 2 to the power of 2 is 9 fourths, and so on. So notice what we have here as our series. The common ratio seems to be 3 halves. This is a geometric series with the ratio being bigger than 1, so therefore it diverges. And by the way, on the AP exam, you do need to justify this. You need to write down all these things that I'm saying. Geometric series, R value, then tell me if it diverges or converges. All right, number five. Same idea, n equals to one. So four times a half is negative two. With n equals to two, that's a quarter times four is just one. And the next one, I think, is just one half. And the term after that is one quarter. That should be enough to tell you what r is. I think you would have said r is a half, or negative half, sorry. And this is, a, once again, a geometric series with the absolute value of r less than 1. So we know it converges, and the sum is just negative 2. And then divide that by 1 minus, and careful here, 1 minus negative half. That's negative 2 over 3 halves, or negative 4 over 3. Okay? Cool. 6 is similar to what we did on the previous page. I'm giving you the repeating decimal this time, and I want you to use a geometric series to tell me what the fractional form will be. And if you're not too sure what that bar represents, that just represents the repeating decimal of 0 0.08. So I guess it'd be 0 0.0008, and then 0 0.0008, and so on. If I asked you to rewrite these as fractions, it might be easier for us to see the actual common ratio. This is 10,000. This is 8 over, I think, a million. And can you see how this becomes the A value of 100, 8 over 100, and the R value of 1 over 100? That's great, because now I can use the formula for the sum a, which is 8 over 100, 1 minus the r value, that's 8 over 100 divided by 99 over 100, which just becomes a fraction 8 over 99. You can plug this into your calculator and get the decimal equivalent. I guarantee you it'll be this repeating decimal. Okay. So in general, convergence of a series is actually less simple, it's not as easy as a convergence of a sequence. Once again, be careful with the idea of series and sequence. So let me give you an example here. This sequence, a sub n, given by the formula 1 over 1 plus n, this converges, once again, the sequence, right? The sequence converges because 
the limit as n approach to infinity of a sub n, meaning the largest term in this list is actually just equal to 1. Right? 1 divided by infinity there is 0, plus 1 is 1. So we know that the largest term is 1, therefore the sequence converges. However, if you look at the actual terms in the sequence and start adding them together, look what you got. 1 plus 1, 1 plus a half, 1 plus a third, and so on and so forth. Perhaps this part does converge, but because you keep adding 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 and going that and doing that forever, forever, forever to infinity, this then does not converge. So this brings us to the fact of the following. And please star this, this is important. Okay? A series cannot converge unless the terms approach a limit of zero. Okay? Now, that also gives rise to the following test. And this is important to box this, you need to memorize. By the way, those geometric series formulas you should also memorize. So the nth term test for what I call divergence. So what we're saying is this. If the limit as an approach to infinity of the term in the sequence does not equal 0, then we know for sure that the sum of a sub n, the series, diverges. So once again, if the sequence limit value is not 0, then the series must diverge. This test also says the following. If the limit of n approaching infinity equals 0, we actually don't know if it diverges or not. Okay? So we can use the nth term test to figure out if something diverges. And I'd like you to use that test to show example number 7 how the sum of this series involving factorials diverge. So notice once again, I really want to figure out if the largest term is equal to zero. If it is, then it's inclusive. If it's not, then it's divergent. So let's hope that if I just do the n approach to infinity of the expression n factorial divided by 2n factorial plus 1, let's see if this diverges. Once again, you're going to use the n behavior model, PBM, which says the largest value is n factorial in the numerator. And in the denominator, it's 2n factorial. We know that in this case, n factorial and then 2 times n factorial, well, the n factorials cancel out, or divide out, excuse me, and you get 1 half. So, we know that this limit, as n approach to infinity, is not 0. And so, therefore, I'll say by the nth term test, some people call it the NTT, this series diverges because the limit of n approach to infinity of the function n over 2 times n factorial plus 1 does not equal to 0. And that's the key fact. It does not equal to zero.